think we'll kick off now. Um, welcome to this session on green infrastructure for, through good investment. I think really looking forward to talking about this important topic. Um, in, investment is something we talk about all the time and it's usually one of the biggest barriers to delivering green infrastructure. Uh, I think there's sort of two lenses to look at green infrastructure and investment. There is, of course, the never ending battle to try and get funding for green infrastructure projects, whether that is through local programmes or through planning requirements for new development. And then there's also the idea that the introduction of green infrastructure and investment will encourage new businesses to invest in an area as the neighbourhood is more attractive for residents and employees. So I think we'll probably touch on both of these points today. We're going to hear three perspectives from three different countries, so, so it should make for a really interesting session and discussion. If you have any questions for our speakers, uh, please do pop them in the chat on the right hand side of your screen and we'll get to the questions after we've heard from the three presentations. I will also ask attendees to keep their microphones and videos turned off just for bandwidth reasons and to make it easier. Um, but please do um, use the chat to chat to each other see who else is in the, listening to this session on the people list. So firstly, I'm, I'm delighted to welcome Ershka Krank from the Urban Institute of Ljubljana, who is going to talk about unlocking economic development through Schmatinsky Park. Ershka is a member of the Slovene Chamber of Architecture, a landscape architect and is employed at the Urban Institute for Ljubljana and co-founder of the Pazi Park, which deals with raising public awareness of the importance of quality of green space. The Perfect Partnership visited Schmartinsky Park back in 2017 and we were really impressed both by the inclusive design of the park and also by the way the park has been used as a catalyst for other investment in that part of the city. So Ershka over to you, I think my colleague is going to share the slides um, and then we'll get started. Hello, uh, for uh, the introduction. Uh, green area of Schmalt Garden area uh, in buffer zone the It's allocated next to the cemetery. I don't know. And see the the second in a row, and I I asking if so the, the area to the cemetery. Because of it, location. Old scene in the same. I think it's Slovene architect. Which link? This a lot. And uh, I. Uh, to to move on to the next slide. Uh, gardens develop. Along the whole this belt shaped area, there is a residue plant uh, next to a development. Uh, uh, this garden and are shared by a lot called um, the gardens. Uh, of course, and ask uh, all areas planted by God with different trees, uh, for example, and maybe if you go to the um, um, the air is quite 
and it was even difficult to the cemetery. It was settings for to pass connect the street with us. Of the park, I deal with the construction material and it plants uh, seeds. So, uh, please, they should plant the seed. With different functions, most important, the church was one of the big places in the northeast. As a channel to Possible and equipped with and a playground. Uh, due to much cultural space by the nearby river, uh, the municipality decided to turn a lot to a park. as a open space. Uh, uh, low resident and their store. And as the whole leaser, okay. Uh, uh, overall, start more thoughtful new. As you can see in the corner, you uh, the uh, scattered fruit trees were left, uh, uh, and, and available. And it became place even before was built. So the, this process was an and, and it next in 2015 when the ground was built. Please. Any request uh, to build this playground? You reset. Let's start it. And it. A play area is by all. No. Ability. I had previously worked together with, with school and nursery kids on various participation projects. The very Islam design. The playground yeah, area is set carefully to the upper distance from Plechnik Cemetery. Can you and just find an existing the store and petrol station? Uh, I don't know uh, which slide. I'm at the slide number six. And uh, so, between the busy uh, combination of uh, because, uh, the park play, play, play park path playground. Yeah. Better. Sorry, can you just turn your camera off because it, so there's a I bit of a delay and I think that might help. That sounds oh, good. So Thank you. That's delay, probably. 
Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, the playground was well accepted among residents and uh, among visitors from even from outside of Ljubljana. They became uh, very fond of the of the playground and started uh, visiting the place just because of it. So uh, the users initiated ideas uh, such as circular paths for running or scooter riding with uh, graphic with graphic marks uh, on the floor, wavy up and down paths, and softly curved hill with assortments of slides. Uh, they are the busiest features along water play pumps, dams, channels, and such. Uh, playground safety is fully provided by a discrete choice of materials. And the heavily visited area called for additional bike racks and the new playground was soon once again uh, upon the wish of visitors followed by another small intervention, a dog park, which is set in the vicinity. Uh, its popularity also triggered an expected feature initiative to, be be to build a design designated playground cafe. With services uh, feature with services for for the playground users in the now uh, existing nearby gas station. Uh, so the city of Ljubljana has been carefully following initially outlined plan, which was already uh, done in 2007, and they coordinated all the providing settings, uh, changing ownership structures design ideas and public response uh, to, de to develop this live growing, still growing project. And this is it for from me. So uh, thank you very much. I hope you, you could hear everything. That was better. Thank you so much, Eshka. It was really interesting to hear about Schmatinsky Park and I'm sure we'll pick up some of those points in the questions. Um, so now I'm next I'm pleased to welcome David Manfredini from the Urban Planning Department at the Municipality of Ferrara in Italy and David is going to talk about the master plan for the San Paolo dock and Old Market in Ferrara and how they are using this green infrastructure project to reconnect different areas of the city. So over to you. Davide, you're on mute, I think. No, it's okay. Uh, uh, thanks for um, introduce uh, this introduction. The slide that showed the location of our city in the Emilia Romagna region. Ferrara is a small town. Uh, the inhabitants of the whole uh, municipality are um, uh, one, uh, 130,000. In the picture, we See one of the main symbols of the, the city, the Stense Castle. Ferrara is uh, famous for this, for its um, cultural heritage, especially from Renaissance. Uh, and for this reason, uh, it was included in the UNESCO World Heritage List uh, since uh, 1995. And, um, the aerial photo shows uh, the whole city in yellow and the main Po River, six kilometers uh, north uh, of the historic center and the mission, including the keep at the city park and the agricultural land and the Volano River, a small branch uh, of the Po River. Um, this is one of the map of our general uh, urban plan called the Green City. It shows our green infra infrastructures network. Uh, a room on uh, the path of the ancient walls, uh, very well preserved, uh, surrounded by a linear park uh, much used by citizens and tourists. The picture shows the upper level uh, and the ground level. Mm, the red circle, the site I'm going to talk about, the São Paulo dock uh, and the old market area. A peculiarity is uh, immediately perceivable because it's the point where the walls and the park are interrupted. Uh, this is an aerial uh, photo taken in 2016. And we can see the walls, uh, the river with uh, the unused piers uh, and um, the big area of the old market used as a 
parking lot um, um, use uh, at the service of the historical center. But um, now the present situation is this one, where uh, the abandoned building, uh, some surfaces, and the boundary walls uh, were demolished. So from this presentation, we can imagine the new um, layout as a starting point uh, uh, of uh, the process. <coughs> um, sorry. Despite its central position, the area has uh, always been considered marginal uh, in contemporary uh, dynamics. Uh, the shutdown of the industrial and um, uh, warehouse activities, uh, which started in the early 20th century, led to the progressive abandonment uh, of the area and the absence of an integrated redevelopment program has created um, and justified the void and the lack of uh, relation between the citizen and the river. The renewal process started uh, in 2008 with an architectural design contest. After three years, uh, the winning project was turned into an urban renewal plan. The concept uh, was uh, inspired of bringing uh, the quality of the and the atmosphere of the city center to the outside uh, and uh, and the river and this slide, sorry this slide uh, um, this is an imaging of the plan uh, you can see that the car park are completely transformed and a new square is planted along the river and uh, um, and the dock and the docks is completely reshaped uh, there are three um, transversal, transversal connection uh, called the green fingers, and uh, I'm going to describe them at the end of the presentation. Um, this was the situation in 2008. In 10 years, the contest uh, has a complete change. Um, now I'd like to focus on three aspects. First, the real estate crisis began in 2008. The graph is uh, very clear. Mm, the second uh, concerns the climate change uh, and uh, its effect on Ferrara has become evident in the last uh, year. And uh, the third uh, is um, the third theme is uh, the increasing relevance uh, of a bottom-up process in the urban regeneration initiatives. This picture describes uh, two experiences uh, related to the project side, both very relevant. Uh, to start the regeneration process, not only in physical meaning. Um, the pictures on the left show Magazzini Savonuzzi, a building now converted into a center of youth cultural production and social innovation. And on the right, uh, the directional building of the old fruit and the vegetable market. After decades of deterioration, it has now become a new polarity for the neighborhood for public uh, uses. Coming back to the case to the um, to the case study, just a few years ago, uh, many people thought that uh, the project uh, would never be realized because of the lack of funds. But in 2016, uh, the national government launched a program to promote urban regeneration initiative. The call for urban renewal and suburban security is now funding uh, 120 projects uh, and two billion euros allocated. Uh, choose uh, this site to be candidated for two reasons essentially. The plan already approved and the several social incl inclusion initiatives started in the previous year. Both of these factors have proved that um, the project could be successfully realized. The two and the feasibility study won the tender and uh, uh, 18 million euros have been allocated. Uh, Ten years have passed and the strategies has to be corrected. Uh, the following points demonstrate a radical change approach. First, um, the wall allocated funds are going to be used for public space and green areas, especially to realize the green connection between the walls and the river. And the second, uh, sustainability mobility, thanks to the improvement of pedestrian and cyclable path. And uh, I'll show the different lots, uh, the project uh, of the urban spaces in the 2016. This map uh, shows the and in 
red and yellow, the building, but the detailed plan. But uh, in uh, 2020, the municipality decided to change the uh, completely. A completely new idea put uh, uh, the attention only on the urban spaces and the connection uh, with the new hard green approach. Uh, this slide shows the, the difference between the plan of the 2018 and the new one, where some projects are already in implementation phases. Now a focus on the four main green spaces of the plan. Uh, these are the, thing, the green fingers, uh, we call it, that link uh, the river with the, the city walls. This area is, um, a parking lot very close to the center so it's very difficult to change uh, its use uh, whenever parking spaces are reduced citizen uh, protests uh, are very intense so the park the car parking space uh, will be maintained but uh, with a three-line solution connection path from the wall to the dock um, this is an uh, ex camille area is now an empty area that converted into a green park with the pedestrian path connecting the river and the walls. This area has been decontaminated because of the presence of uh, pollution and, and during the contamination restrictions of use have been introduced. Uh, this has influenced the, the project which will not provide a keeped area, branches, uh, playgrounds but uh, will uh, use vegetation and different essence to act crossing and uh, this is uh, this area is the most important free parking a lot of the town very close to the center and designed that provides uh, um, a reduction of the spaces for the car and the consequence increase of green spaces and connection path the last slide showed the project of sao paulo dock in implementation phase the site is imagined as a green infrastructure mainly aimed to climb mitigation, mitigation purpose. The project tries to maximize all the ecosystem service that can, uh, that the area can provide. Uh, key elements of the project are the recovery and the integration of existing vegetation and choice materials and rainwater uh, management at local and neighbors, uh, neighborhood district level, a realization of micro corridors to increase the biodiversity and the reduce, uh, reduction of uh, air pollution agent thanks to the new um, new appropriate vegetation. And uh, the project was also on the attractiveness and the connection of the site, a uh, new square and the reinitiated as a flexible multi-use space. Uh, well, um, we uh, we hope this experience will be an example of how the concept of green infrastructure and can permeate uh, um, a complex uh, urban uh, planning. Thanks. Thank you very much, David. That was really interesting and a great example of uh, how to link different parts of cities through green infrastructure. Looking forward to hearing more about that in future as well as it gets more developed. Um, we'll have some questions after the final presentation. Um, so I'm very pleased to welcome, uh, David, if you stop sharing your screen now, that'd be good. Mm -hmm. Very pleased to welcome Mark Gabor, who is an independent development expert from the Somogy region in Hungary, who is going to talk about the Green City Funding Call in Hungary, which provides funding for green infrastructure projects. Mark is going to talk about how they have managed to influence the Green City Call through the examples and policies that they have learned about through the Perfect Partnership. So. Mark, if you'd like to share your screen and uh, over to you. Yes, thank you. Hello, my name is Mark. I'm the responsible project manager for the Hungarian project part of Perfect. And uh, just a quick addition. Can you see my presentation? Yes, yes, we can. Okay. 
Just a quick addition for the to the introduction from Jesse that uh, this presentation really just envelops our our story and the learning curve that we have carried out during these couple of years of Perfect. As you can see in the following uh, slides, uh, we had quite some interesting tasks and goals to achieve and to complete, and. Um, as late joiners to the project, uh, we really had to be uh, flexible and uh, dynamic in this uh, learning progress. And uh, we we really we have really we have really learned that the key uh, key uh, experience for us was interregional learning. Okay, so the title is the power of learning from others: the Green City Call. Uh, Green City Call is very important because uh, upon the elaboration of the project documentation and the application form, uh, the, uh, inf the instrument to be influenced was the top 21216 uh, instrument and Green City Call is, was a part uh, of this instrument and it was aimed at uh, local, uh, uh, local settl at, uh, settlements and cities and villages to create uh, project infrastructure infrastructure projects uh, with GI uh, influence. Uh, so uh, our company is uh, uh, SASD, as you can see on the first uh, slide, and uh, our company has two main angles to influence uh, these uh, aforementioned instruments. We are in close connection with uh, the county government, Shumwet County government, and the Shamwat County government provides us with an official and a very uh, usable channel towards the central government and ministries to provide expert opinion on future calls and future uh, spa uh, future green, green planning. Therefore, all of the all of the uh, good practices and all of the experience gathered through Perfect and from our uh, cooperating partners was transferred through Shamwood County government to our uh, cooperating uh, liaison at uh, the Ministry of Finances, which is responsible for this kind of development. The other angle uh, where we could uh, influence these kind of green uh, developments are our direct connection with stakeholders. And this is where Green City calls coming, uh, coming picture because uh, our stakeholders are the ones that were able to send in applications for these uh, so-called green city calls there is a much longer name but let's just call them green city calls uh, and uh, our problem the first problem that we had to face was that when we joined perfect uh, we were the successor of the south trans Danubian development agency to create an expert material an expert methodology for their participation in perfect but we were a bit delayed and uh, our government was a bit too quick in regards of publishing calls so effectively when we could start to work in our research with imperfect these green city calls were already out and yet most of the applications were already sent in so uh, in the application form one of our application form one of our key indicators is the influencing of the number uh, uh, and the quality of applications for green city calls luckily that is completed because uh, if i'm correct there was a 40 percent increase uh, in green city call application uh, uh, designated uh, in our application form and that is completed but uh, that was completed how should i say too quickly or too early in the expert part of the project so we looked uh, a little bit into the future and try to use uh, our learning progress uh, within perfect to influence the successor of green city calls there will be a call similar to that there, there will be an instrument similar to that at the time we did not know the name but we knew the opening progress is already underway and we could provide a uh, very uh, important uh, expert insight for that uh, so just a small amount of numbers and the progress that I have mentioned before. Uh, Mark, 25... I don't think we can see the slides properly, actually. It seems, still seems okay. to be on the first slide at the moment. Okay. Uh, 
Well, what do you see now? We can see PowerPoint with the slides at the side and then the main slide in the middle. Oh, I'm just sorry. <laughs> That's okay, sorry. And uh, maybe now? Uh, it's not any different yet. Oh, yeah, yeah. We can, yes, we can see the third slide now. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Okay, and Thank now you. you should you should see a slide called Numbers and Progress. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so uh, as uh, mentioned before, in our application form, uh, we promise that uh, forty percent increase will be produced uh, in the number of green city uh, applications. That number is in our region is twenty five, so the forty percent increase is quite uh, over overdone or overachieved, and. Um, we have to find a new focus uh, to to utilize the the advantages of perfect uh, to really influ include green, uh, green infrastructure development into the future and uh, from this point of the history we know that it is going to be the new instrument to be influenced influenced will be called top plus and uh, uh, our action plan and the uh, project's action plan is completed just in time to use the good uh, practices designated in that very action plan to be forwarded forwarded towards the Ministry of Finances and therefore hopefully some of it uh, to be included in the future Green City calls. And there is where you can see, I mentioned at the uh, beginning, of, beginning of my presentation, that inter-regional learning is really key. It is not just a bubble that uh, people used to say when uh, participating in this kind of projects, because what we have learned through this project and from our project partners, uh, that is the information that uh, will really uh, exercise its uh, ability to change uh, our future planning uh, in, the, in the in the country itself. So our good practices, designated uh, by our experts in our action plan, uh, is the biological activity value and the chief gardener position. The the uh, selection of these good practices was done uh, or was carried out by our experts, Gabor personally, and um, again. Uh, Interregional learning comes into picture uh, when uh, when uh, trying to find a rationale uh, for the use of these um, these uh, good uh, uh, these good practices. For example, biological activity value is a very uh, very uh, hard uh, computing method that already existed in Hungary, but was not used. Uh, it was used in spatial planning and master planning. And uh, we found out, thanks to our work in Perfect, that it uh, can function quite, uh, quite beneficially as a general measurement for the quality and quantity of green infrastructure in project planning. So not just spatial planning, not just city master planning, but uh, for example, in future green city calls. And hopefully, we only have uh, work documents uh, in relation to this. But hopefully, uh, in the future Green City calls, uh, biological activity value will be involved in the call themselves as a kind of regarding, uh, rewarding me mechanism, uh, which means that uh, whoever uses biological activity value uh, in the planning of their project and will be able to increase the number of the biological activity value, will have more points uh, during the elaboration of uh, their uh, application. And chief gardener uh, position uh, is also very important. Uh, chief, the position itself, itself also exists uh, at Hungarian local uh, governments, but there is no exact financing for it. So most of the settlements does, do not have chief gardeners. But uh, also, again, uh, the learning curve of Perfect told us that uh, um, our partners, uh, local governments, who employ chief gardener or some position, have, uh, have a very, very good oversight and a very nice progress in their green infrastructure development and uh, just the overall monitoring of their green. That was also, again, the rationale that uh, why we use the chief gardener, an already existing method, but quite unused method, 
to uh, be recommended in future calls uh, as a budget line to be uh, for settlements to be able to apply for as a, as a personal uh, cost in any kind of project uh, in regards of uh, infrastructure development whichever is uh, uh, even in touch with green infrastructure and uh, also our good practices uh, show uh, that uh, uh, just a couple of which just a couple of pictures now uh, show well, well planned and well maintained green infrastructure uh, can bring a lot of benefits. Even in Hungary, uh, you might suspect that green infrastructure development and optimization is quite, uh, quite in the starting point uh, in Hungary. But uh, during the visit to Hungary, project partners were able to witness some of it uh, in uh, real life and some of its benefits. So the first uh, uh, is uh, Bubbles Beach. And uh, regretfully, when our project partners were in Hungary, they were not able to experience it 100% because we had quite a bad uh, weather. But you can see that Bubbles Beach is, uh, is a uh, artificial uh, beach activity center in the lake uh, next to the shores of Lake Balaton. And uh, in the uh, the first picture shows that it is it was uh, still under development uh, when uh, at the time the picture was taken, and you can see uh, that um, it includes a lot of green infrastructure. Now you have to know that uh, this uh, this part of Lake Balaton was quite derelict and under optimized at the time of the planning of uh, Bubbles Beach and. Uh, also, you can see that uh, uh, thanks to the project, this derelict part of the shore is now filled with life and with a lot of green areas and a lot of... Mark, uh, yes? sorry, um, we're still not in the right slime. Could you oh. try to change it? Oh, what, what do you see now? We're still on numbers and progress. Oh, sorry. Okay, so I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> Uh, I don't right. know what might be the problem. Uh, now, what do you see? We see a picture of a green infrastructure. Okay, okay. So you can see the 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 water park, maybe. No, um, we can see a path. Um, path. I think we are still on. Um, we're still in PowerPoint rather than in um, full screen mode. That's the problem. All right, uh, so uh, I don't know what to do because I am full screen now. And uh, so no progress on your side yet. Because I'm changing the slides. No. Do you want me to do it on this end? Can you maybe try to I, I uh, start, stop my sharing? I will, yeah, yeah. I'll put it up. Okay, thank you, Kova. Sorry, everyone. We'll get there soon. <laughs> this was not a problem the day before. No, we did test it. Let me see. Yes, that's good. Thank you. Oh, that's it. That's it. And now just a couple of pre couple of pictures. Yes. So if you can stop here, you can see that uh, this uh, shore of Lake Bluton was quite derelict and underused and underplanned. It was just basically a free beach. Uh, and then thanks to this uh, uh, GI uh, related investment. It is very smartly uh, uh, given uh, some life and some uh, progress, uh, some activity and uh, some venues for various sporting and leisure activities. Uh, could you just uh, skip to the next picture? Uh, it's still just the area of view. You can see that uh, the area next to Bubbles Beach is completely covered in green area. Yes. 
And the next here are uh, the other venue or the other location that we have visited with our uh, partners was uh, Shiofok city center. And here are some area views uh, of Shiofok uh, because there was no possibility to show the project partners uh, the overall area of uh, Shiofok. You can see in these um, in these pictures, in these area views, that the very city center of Shiofok is uh, covered with trees and with green areas and a lot of green infrastructure. If you can just press space again, maybe we have a better picture. Yes, here. Uh, so this is the exact city center. You can see it's uh, on the shore of Lake Balaton. And this is important because uh, these uh, green areas, this green infrastructure, and a lot of uh, and a huge amount of trees is not just uh, occasionally or just there because Shiofok is one of the cities in Hungary that uh, actually employs a chief gardener, and Shiofok uh, sim similar uh, very similarly to some of our partners uh, have a, a, a city register of all the protected trees. Uh, in the in the city area and all of these trees uh, can you just skip a picture and uh, you can see that all of these trees are registered and all of these trees have a certain portfolio and uh, life log uh, in regards of them and uh, the chief gardener can really draw up uh, a, a curve uh, a curve in relation of the uh, caring of these green infrastructure areas, especially the trees. Most of these trees that you can see uh, in these pictures are branded, uh, located, uh, protected, and uh, cared for. Maybe just another picture. Yes, uh, this is the this is the same park that we were in when uh, our partners were in Shiofok. And you can see it's quite uh, raw well uh, preserved and uh, quite well cared for. And I believe this is the last picture. And that means that this is the end of my presentation also. Great, thank you, Mark. And sorry about those uh, issues, everyone. Oh, no, sorry from my side. <laughs> um, we now have about 20 minutes for some questions. So please do put them in the Q&A or the chat. I'll keep an eye on both. Um, I guess I had one to start with, which is, to all three of you really and that what do you think the biggest barrier is to getting funding for green infrastructure projects and how have you addressed that in your area and maybe we go in order so Ershka do you do you have any thoughts on that question um maybe the the reason is that uh, um the connectivity uh between uh the the green areas and the feed financial feedback they give is quite uh, un, unapparent and it takes a long time for the feedback to, to kick in. So uh, maybe this can be overcome to some extent by, by uh, doing things uh, gradually and in phases. This was the case in, in Smartinsky Park. Maybe. Great, thank you. Uh, David, did you have any thoughts? Mm, no. Okay, mm. Mark? It's not really a, a barrier, but it's a, it's a task for us and all of our expert colleagues to shape the op overall opinion on green infrastructure, because we have to, and we were doing in the recent years, thanks to Perfect, uh, persuade makers and planners that green infrastructure is not really just a lot of grass or some trees. It has to be planned uh, in a very smart way and very effective way. Uh, it is a very huge step towards sustainability. And uh, this is uh, the, 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 knowledge, the knowledge and the methods that we have to transfer to these planners and decision makers to have very effective uh, GI planning. Great, thank you. Um, so we've got some questions from some participants. Um, Mark, there's a question about the biological activity value and how it's calculated. Do you think you could give a bit of information about this? 
Yes, quite uh, not uh, not quite a bit information because I have to confess that I am not a planning expert and I could not uh, uh, tell you information in regards uh, of the uh, computing methods that behind the biological activity value. But uh, if the whoever asked this question, if you can uh, forward uh, maybe an email address uh, for me, I will be sure to ask uh, one of our experts to provide a brief overview you in regards of bi biological activity value. Okay, thank you. That that sounds good. Um, another question from someone is, will the municipalities be responsible for the maintenance of the new green spaces created in the examples presented? And if so, how are you planning on funding this maintenance? Uh, David, do you, have, do you have any thoughts on that about um, the new green spaces in Ferrara? Yes, <clears throat> uh, the question is uh, it's really good because uh, uh, for the future of these green spaces uh, is uh, really important the maintenance uh, and uh, the security of these spaces. Um, first, uh, all, the, all the urban spaces I presented uh, are public. So in our in our um, job, uh, we there's a balance uh, between uh, the public money uh, to the the meters of uh, meet of green spaces or um, public spaces. Uh, so, uh, if uh, we implement uh, the these kind of urban spaces, uh, mm, uh, the maintenance cost uh, increase. But uh, yes, every year there's a balance between uh, this uh, this needed. I hope I have an uh, answer. Trying to unmute. Yes, that was good. Thank you. And Ursh, did you do you know about this for um, Schmartinsky Park? I know you don't work for the municipality, but does that does the city of Ljubljana pay for the maintenance of that park? Yeah, it does. Uh, I'm actually I don't really know. Uh, uh, I don't have a lot of inf information on on this. Uh, but as I as I can follow the the uh, state that the park is in, uh, it it's in a good uh, condition. So yes, they're maintaining it quite properly. Even the playground, which is uh, quite a high maintenance feature and with the water uh element it's it it takes uh quite a lot of work i guess but it's also really heavily visited so i think it uh it 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 leaves them no choice but to to maintain the benefits are there yeah yeah yes and um mark what about the places in sumaji and kapashvar You're on mute. You really just stuttered uh, for a couple of seconds. What was the question again? So it's about how the new green spaces that you have created um, are being maintained and who is. Oh yeah, all oh, right, right, right. So it was the original question. So two kinds of uh, how, should, how should I say maintenance uh, are feasible. One uh, one of it is if if the green infrastructure related infrastructural investments was carried out during a call. Uh, from a certain amount of EU funds, then whoever uh, applied for that funding is responsible for the uh, maintaining and upkeeping uh, of that given infrastructure within the project period. And uh, generally 99% of these uh, applications are carried out by local governments, uh, settlements. So uh, after that, after the project's uh, physical uh, closure, uh, they are the ones who are responsible for the maintenance of this. And here is also where our, one of our good practices, chief gardener position uh, comes into place because uh, there has to be an expert who, who can uh, plan uh, the maintenance of of the green infrastructure in the long run. Great, thank you very much. Um, I think we'll have one more question, um, which is one that I was thinking about earlier, um, which is, do you think that the regeneration of these areas and the implementation of new green spaces has caused uh, economic changes in the surrounding areas? So for example, our more home, 
houses being built in the areas next to the green infrastructure or are new businesses being located there? Have you noticed these kind of changes um, as a result of the new green infrastructure? Um, David? Yeah, well, um, mm, I think, uh, yes, the, uh, there's an implementation, uh, um, especially for uh, for this area, uh, we are uh, not exactly center, but really close to the center. It's a really dense, uh, populated uh, area. And uh, um, green spaces, the material to to create uh, a new landscape, uh, especially for the um, uh, the area, the parking car um, along the river in the dock. Uh, um, we hope in the future, at the end of the realization, uh, to create uh, some um, uh, some possibility to to um, about the management of the private. Uh, sp um, Sport uh, Association uh, Society, um, and uh, yes, uh, we think uh, um, the approach is to improve uh, the health of the of the citizens. This is uh, the main goal we we will see in the future. Thank you, um, Ashka. Uh, actually, the the whole wider area of the park was already a kind of development uh, area even before, and it was all the the, the reason that the park was be, uh, was uh, built, and uh, it was all connected. I think even before uh, the, this whole process started, uh, but. Yes, of course, there are some um, real estate uh, uh, areas in the in, near the park and new uh, residential areas are being built all the time, actually. And it's also next to the big to a big commercial area. So it's all connected, I think. And I think the park plays a, a really important uh, role in uh, uh, being the whole wider area being a more uh, inviting and and more expensive also that uh, I think it it uh, it's connected to the real estate uh, value in the in the area so yes I'm yeah sure, which is I'm sure it, it has a good um, uh, impact yeah um and mark did you have you noticed that kind of thing um with the examples you were sharing yes yes as you might remember uh, the two uh, projects that i demonstrated were both on the uh, shores of lake balaton and uh, this is also a very uh, very dynamically developing area because it's one of our tourism touristic centers of hungary but uh, definitely uh, you can see that uh, when it comes to tourism and leisure activities uh, gi uh, planning and uh, any possibility for recreational activity or activity that can be carried out uh, within or in the area of green infrastructure is a key so there is definitely a rise in whether uh, you uh, whether you research the amount of um, uh, nights spent next to Lake Bolton or whether uh, the um, you research the amount of uh, of buildings or areas purchased uh, next to green uh, infrastructure or next to areas that are affected by green infrastructure. Great, thank you. Um, thank you all of three of you for answering those questions. Um, I think we will wrap up now. Um, the, for the person who was in, interested in the biological activity value, um, I would also recommend reading um, the perfect expert paper on the green space factor, which is a sort of similar mechanism for uh, building, uh, incorporating green infrastructure into new development in cities. We wrote an expert paper about it earlier in the project and you can download it from the expo um, booth, which is on the left hand side of your screen. So I'd recommend taking a look at that. 
So yeah, I just wanted to say a big thank you to our three speakers uh, for their excellent presentations. And I hope you learned about some new uh, green city, green infrastructure examples that you hadn't heard about before. Um, we now have a 30 minute break um, when, and I would encourage you to use the networking facilities during that uh, time. And then we will be back at 12.30 London time. On the main stage at that point there will be a discussion about green infrastructure and water and then um, on the sessions tab where we are now there will be a session on from grassroots to political leadership how to make it happen so um thank you very much everyone for joining and we will um see you in a bit cheers thanks to you thanks. bye bye bye, bye. <laughs>